The title of my talk is Oil Paintings, Message Machines, and Snow Globes. And as scientists, you're wondering what's come down there, right? I am an analog evangelist. Um, my work is really about seeing if there is a good combination or a good translation of the digital with the physical, the tactile, the sensory, the analog. Um, and it's a practice of retrofitting future-facing technology with our analog past. So this is my website. It gives you a preview. If you want to look it up and explore in detail, it's jdbelcher.com. I'm going to start with an evolution of um, my early work because I think it's informative in terms of where I am now. I, um, I actually started uh, as a painter at the San Francisco Art Institute working in painting and sculpture. One of my earliest um, sculptures was of a box of chocolates of all my faculty. So what I did was I took all of the faculty I worked with and I made chocolates and gave them names um, according to the personality of the faculty because I did a lot of work in portraiture. Uh, this is Judy Pickle Pearl. I also was very fortunate to be selected for the Scout Eden Residence in uh, the Scout Eden School of um, uh, Painting and Sculpture in Maine. And he's actually the son of the present day um, Tom Pickle Pearl, who's the present day commissioner of uh, New York for public art. But what I did when I was there was I, I made a doll. I started a whole doll series where I would actually find dolls that looked somewhat like my subjects, and then I would create all the way down in their detail, their clothes, their scale, their faces. I, would, I was an oil painter, a trained oil painter, so I would actually prepare the faces with gesso, like an old master's oil painting, gesso and rackets and glue, and paint them in layers of pink and glazes. Um, here's one of me doing myself. Um, sitting on my favorite books. Um, and then I also, very early on, when I was in my last year of grad school, got interested in the form of the snow globe. So this is actually a two-scale model of Studio 10 at the San Francisco Art Institute um, with the ladder that was in the back in the closet when you walked in, as well as every single person who was in my final critique group. So what I did was I made a tiny little portrait of them using German trained figures. At that point, digital printers and cameras had just come out. That dates me. But what I did was um, I actually took uh, tiny little photographs of everyone's faces and then painted on the exact clothes that they would wear. Many people would wear the same outfits. Um, and then people tended to sit in the same place whenever they came to class. So I arranged them in the same place they would sit. And then I, for the actual critique of this piece, which was my final piece, I had them all way outside. I situated the snow globe it, on a pedestal in the center of Studio 10, and when I left them in, they all looked into the snow globe to see themselves critiquing the snow globe. Um, this was my um, graduate show where I was exploring many forms of portraiture, from the paintings you see on the wall, to the um, wall ledge, to the uh, photographs, to the snow globe, and then I was also writing um, short stories about my experience. Uh, as a trained painter, I also started combining painting with video, exploring the relationship between the still and the moving image. Uh, this was one of my MFA master copy pieces. This is actually a, a, an oil painting painted in the style of Vermeer, which is a self-portrait. And then I made a video version. Um, I, I do want to note, this was before Bill Viola started doing his. <laughs> you can date this. This is in 1998. And I actually um, was able to get the exact same sort of clothes that cast off the same light in, um, as the Vermeer figure. And instead of having her face, I had one of my best friends model and have her face away. And the video is a very simple 90 second video where all she does is turn to the side where you see a profile of her face and the earring dangles and then she turns back. But it, it introduced the idea of movement into a classical painting. Um, I've always been a sculptor in my free time. Uh, when my son was very young, I asked him what he, every year I would ask him what he wanted to be for Halloween, and I would make a costume of that. And so you can see when he was two, one, he wanted to get banana, his favorite food was ketchup. He got obsessed with traffic cones. <laughs> he loved mango, mint, and strawberry ice cream, as well as um, chocolate covered sprinkled donuts, uh, spaghetti, <laughs> salami sandwiches, popcorn, uh, cotton candy, and waffles. And the two, probably the most popular of these costumes, and these were a lot of fun, and it also taught me a lot about sort of um, sculpture, because I had a, a design brief to make these light enough for a, an, a child to be able to wear for two hours while they went trick-or-treating, to be able to go up and down the stairs so he could get his candy. 
Um, and so these were really fun design challenges, and most of the late, latter, more sophisticated ones I did with my collaborative partner, who's also in the audience, Scott Minnick, and Wayne. Um, he raised popcorn, he raised waffle, and um, mac and cheese. <laughs> so uh, my, uh, my deeper foray into combining art and technology um, started with a really incredible commission uh, by the MIT Media Lab. And this was a, a landmark exhibition called Identity, which was in 2000, which traveled all over the world. And it was uh, 10 artists who, at a very early time in this, um, at, at this point, this was the year 2000, actually, um, who were working at the intersection of art and technology and, and moving image and interactivity. Um, it included um, Lynn Hirschman and Jim Campbell and myself. Um, and what this was, was actually, what was very cool about this piece was they wanted my, they, I was selected for the piece based on essentially my video painting work, and they wanted some ideas about what I wanted to do, and I sent them a description and a little drawing that I wanted to make a self-portrait, which was only telephone messages. So no one would ever see me, they would just hear my messages, and they, and, and they would be accessed through an interactive surface. So, um, you can see the surface now, it's about six feet by four feet. I'm gonna play a little bit of this, so let me see. This is here they are at the media lab actually. Can you feel the lights on this Photograph into an iPad application. So I'm going to look at that. 
Hi, we're here at the workshop residency looking at the latest application developed by um, me and Scott, and this is called LIM, L-I-M-N. It's uh, four panels that you're looking at, and they're done in four different mediums. From the left is a photograph, and then HD video, as you can see the moving image, and then Super 8 film, and then a painting inspired by the material language series where I did all of these mediums as originals. With the iPad application, if you tilt it, you actually see that ribbon of that medium move across the um, surface of the iPad. And then if you want to explore one of the mediums anymore, you can move it with your finger, or you can actually widen that vertical ribbon with your finger to explore more of the Super 8 film, more of the painting version in the image, or more of the video or photograph. Um, at the same time while I was developing these, uh, these art pieces, I also was working on quite a few public art commissions. So um, I'm also, have a, I also have a long background as a public artist. And again, exploring the idea of a portrait. And this is a uh, commission by um, San Jose where I actually interviewed people uh, in the depth of San Jose. I would actually just sort of randomly stop people and ask the question. And from that, I get a portrait of what people were, were thinking, what they were concerned about, and sort of psychogeography of the city. I created videos with what their responses were, their quotes. And those were directed in the windows of downtown um, San Jose for about a year as part of a project. This particular project actually uh, won a, um, an award as one of the top public art projects uh, in the country in 2009. And that also led to another public art commission called Coral. This was also up for 18 months in downtown San Jose, and this was actually uh, a, a visual history of the evolution of how humans have rendered the, the human eye from the Cape Indians to the moon. And it was projected like hugely, as you can see, 30 feet across by like 16 feet across downtown. Um, I'm now going to go into the magic story table, which was a sort of natural extension of telephone story. And, um, but this happened uh, sort of by accident in the sense that it happened because of my collaboration with Scott. Scott helped me do a redo of the telephone story piece for, for an artwork. And then we ended up um, taking one of his original exhibition uh, pieces specialized in museum exhibitions, which was a tilty table that had interactive video projected on the table, and added stories to it and created a magic story table. And as you can see, this subsequently commissioned all over the world. And what we would do, here's Scott's uh, website, slminiman.com. Um, he has a, uh, he has multiple degrees from MIT and Stanford. He has um, degrees in architecture and mechanical engineering from MIT and uh, a PhD in mechanical engineering and design from Stanford. And he also, while in grad school, uh, invented what became the precursor to T9. So you have here the inventor of T9. Um, anyhow, so this is the magic story table. What it is is it takes maps of various cities, and we literally go on, on interviews and solicit interviews about what people's most memorable moment was um, in a particular city, and then we map them. And then we pair them with videos. So it becomes this really wonderful sort of interactive storytelling piece about the city. And so I'm going to play one example of what it's like. And the way that you find the stories is the table is your uh, interactive device. You spin it like a giant dial. It's much more fun than Google Earth. Um, you zoom in by turning it. And then you'll see all of these titles of stories these have actually a pirate's map X because we did it for the pirate story at 826 Valencia, the commission. Um, there's a story there that's on the beach that you can see, the arrow. And so once you reach that story, then a whole series of um, photos comes up along with the audio version of the storyteller, which is um, what you hear from um, a mic, as well as the text version of the story. And then when you're done with this page, you can see there's a little arrow at the bottom, and you turn that arrow, and it goes to the next page. And, and what's really exciting is that you're able to, to get a sense, sort of on the ground, of what the people are thinking and what's concerning them. 
um, in a particular city all over the world. This here is where we were doing it in um, St. Petersburg, Russia. And then we also did it in, in Kyrgyzstan, in Bishkek. And it was in the Bishkek National Museum. It's also been in San Francisco and a couple places and our next commission is about to open in, um, in May at the Global Museum at San Francisco State. This is in the Kyrgyzstan National Museum. Um, so working with video and working with storytelling, also, and I'll, also as you can see, when I was a um, uh, when I was in grad school, I was fascinated with snow globe, led to the cinema snow globe. So we got this wonderful opportunity to be at the workshop residence and to essentially ask them, they asked us, what do you want to make? We'll make whatever you want us to make. Uh, and so we thought, since Scott had also had experience working with snow globes and making custom ones, let's make a snow globe that's not analog, but that has like cinnamon in it instead of, uh, that combines the form of the snow globe and cinema. So it looks like a snow globe, but it actually has and since all of you are, you're pretty small, I'm gonna have Scott B. Vanna. He's gonna hand around a bunch of snow globes so you can actually play with them. They're, they're pretty fun. Mm -hmm. oh, sure, <laughs> you get the first one. <laughs> so this is the precursor. We, in terms of making custom snow globes, besides the critique, I then went on to make some <coughs> other, this is actually a snow globe of my, um, School cafeteria, SFBI cafeteria. Um, but I really love the idea of making a bespoke snow globe, right? Not something that you get at the cheap gift shop. And even more so with video. So our, one of the first ones was of uh, instead of an analog Golden Gate Bridge, you get, you actually drive across the Golden Gate Bridge, you can see fireworks. And we recently showed at the um, CES, and this is actually from CES. This was a cover coverage by the Daily Mirror. Let's see if this to start. The Daily Mail. Are, um, these are actually 
where we have multiple lenses and we take the footage and we put them in a grid and it makes this really beautiful moving print. Um, so we're taking sort of video footage but then we're actually translating it and speaking the language of the multiple. Um, so this last piece is untitled. So we, we actually, this is one of our newest pieces. We just finished this piece last week. Um, and uh, again, we're exploring um, both portraiture as well as let's see if I can make this um, play, as well as um, playing with the lens and how it actually can make something feel real. So quite literally, instead of the flat digital, um, you have a piece that actually has a feeling of a, a real animal because of the dimensions of the lens. But of course, and this is my last slide, there's nothing like the real thing. 